I'm, I'm actually um, thankful that I kind of got in at that time, 2011, you know, still, we're still doing foreclosures and short sales and, you know, all of those things. And, you know, what it's, what it's taught me and what's allowed me to teach other agents is it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Real estate's always going to sell, right? It's buying, people are going to buy, people are going to sell even right now. You know, I, I tell people, if you're a real estate agent and, and you're scared or you're nervous about your business, like you, you just got to get on a different bus. Yeah. Right? You got to get around different people yep. because no matter what's going on, someone's going to have to sell. Someone's going to have to buy. It's 100%. just whether or not you want to change and change the way you do business potentially and yeah. maybe lose a little bit of ego to allow you to make that pivot. For sure. And if, I think to just hit on that and I, something that we really stress is, you know, every season things change and you got to pivot with it, right? Like you know, two years ago, this was working. Well, that doesn't work anymore. And if you're not making the changes, if you're not pivoting, you're not going to get those phone calls. You yeah. know, you, this isn't a people. I think people get in trouble. Probably people get in trouble in life just in general and they get stagnant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stop challenging themselves. Stop learning. Stop educating. Um, and if you're not getting that out to your people, then you're, you're nobody, you know, you're, yeah. they're not gonna, they're not gonna come to you when, you know, for the better of, you know, if something happens in the world and we go back to foreclosure short, they're not coming to you yeah. because you're not talking about it. You're not educating them. You didn't pivot. Um, so that's a good point. But I grew up in sports. Yeah, no, I grew up in sports too. And you know, it's funny. I think about it quite a bit and it's like, you know, in sports, you know, we are never afraid to, f- to fail. Right. Yeah. You know, trying a new move, you know, whatever baseball. Right. You know, stealing a base, yeah. you know, working, you know, working on different skills. But, you know, in business, a lot of people are afraid to even myself. Like I, I check myself all the time, you know, <laughs> afraid to, to make that pivot or to make that move or to make that commitment to try something new that may be able to help you uh, help your business and put you in a better spot. And sure. um, I literally think about that often, you know, like yeah. why, you know, why in sports was I always never afraid to lose, you know, or to fail or to, to look a certain way, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, in, in my real estate business, sometimes I'm, I'm just hesitant, you know, to do it. So. Yeah. And I think people, they just, like you said, they get a little hesitant, they get nervous, but I feel like if you really just do it, you have nothing to lose and you have everything to gain. Yeah. So no, I agree. Sometimes, sometimes just ripping the bandaid off is the best way to do it. Yeah. And, and, you know, you just don't know. That's the thing is you don't know. It may work out for the best and, yeah. you know, you're going to be happy and it may be an absolute dud. Yeah. But at least <laughs> you, you learn something. At least you yeah. learn something along the way. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. If you fail, what'd you learn? And they won't do it again or you'll do it yep. better a different way. Yep. So I want to get into graduated college. Yep. Mom tells you to go into to real estate, which is interesting because most parents, <laughs> don't tell their their kids out of college to go into a commission based business. Yeah. Uh, so so you kind of pass on that a little bit, put that on the back burner, get into medical device yeah. sales. How did you get into that? Was it just kind of what was available, kind of fall into your lap, or? So one of my best friends, he uh, he actually took a job the year before me. He went to Otterbein, took a job with a company that moved him out to Kansas City, and. Um, I knew it was something with med device, but I heard he was hauling around equipment in a van. So I called him. I'm like, Hey, like, what are you doing? So he told me all about it. And you know, then he came home for like Thanksgiving break. I can remember it. We were, um, do you remember the old caribou coffee on lane Avenue back in the day before they sold? It's for no, Crimson Cubs now. It's like okay. down from, down from Whole Foods. It used to be a caribou okay. coffee. So I remember we were sitting there and he's showing me like on his, uh, uh, you know, an iPad, what he's selling and, company and he gets to travel and do all these things and you know i had never left ohio like i i'd never lived anywhere else so um he got me an interview and then the rest was kind of history and i actually moved to pittsburgh um believe it or not um, for the job and i was with that company for five or six years and i was covering three different states i was gone tuesday through thursday you know i was 22 years old and you know making a living that you know, I was very fortunate to make at that age, yeah. right? I mean, 22 and, you know, I'm able on a weekend to go out to Los Angeles to visit a buddy, you know, like yeah. not many people were doing that. Um, but during that time is when I got into real estate. Uh, okay. And I, I have a story that pains me, but 
a buddy of mine who lived in Columbus was like, Hey, like, let's buy some properties. And I'm like, what do you want to do with them? You know, like, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with them. You know, he's like, well, let's buy them and we'll rent them out and we'll just sit on them and we'll kind of grow this business. And I was like, all right, whatever. So we bought this duplex on Dakota Avenue in Franklinton for $15,000. Yeah. We fixed it up, put like another like 15 or 20 in it. And it was the worst two years of my life with, with like tenants. Right. Uh, that area of Franklinton was pretty rough. You know, that would probably would have been like 2011, 2012. I was going to say, what year, what year are we talking? Cause those numbers were like when I started getting, getting into the business. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was rough, right? Like it yeah. was, it was bad. And, um, so then we bought another one, you know, we're like, okay, what is like, we'll, we'll like figure it out. Right. We're, I mean, we have yeah. no clue what we're doing. I'm a hundred percent sure we're losing money every month, like not getting rent checks. I think our property manager was ripping us off, you know, but like we didn't care because we owned properties. Yeah. And, um, it got to the point where we were both trapped. We were, he ended up working for the same company I did. We were traveling so much and we just felt like we were being bad, bad landlords. We just couldn't do it right like yeah. he wasn't home i was in another state and so we decided to sell it and i look back i'm like if we just would have boarded the houses up and paid the property taxes it, we would have we would have just been okay yeah so that's how yeah. i kind of got real estate you would have been better than okay <laughs> yeah well, you know the funny thing is one of those duplexes traded last year for like three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars down there yeah so and it, like, i drove past and i took a picture on my cell phone i sent it to him i was like you'll never believe what i just found out and uh we were we die laughing thinking about it like because it was when i tell you it was bad like we had we had police calling us like you know yeah. there was domestic violence and it was just like a bad situation yeah um, but that's how i got cut my teeth into real estate Actually, on, on the, the investor side. side yeah yeah you know it's interesting because um same 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 type thing uh as far as you know looking back it's always hindsight right it, it always seems always, better. Yeah. yeah but uh when i got into the business ryan uh who's our team leading my mentor uh we had a, an reo portfolio that we were selling off for a bank Good. 120 properties and um you know at the time it was anywhere from 15 grand to 30 40 50 grand a property uh yep. we were selling houses in royal manor uh over there in gahanna yeah i think the highest one we've ever sold over there was like 60 some thousand dollars and oh. uh we had 115 of these and we're like man only if well, i was a broke college kid so you know just yeah. recent grad i didn't have no money and it's not like anyone i knew was going to give me any money but right. you know we're looking like man only if we would have kept like 10 or 10. 15 of those <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know yeah. but it is known with like private money was like back in the day <laughs> like you know you could have gone to somebody like we should do this yeah i mean it was just crazy um you know there's a over in gahanna off of hamilton road there's a a ranch right across from um the kroger and the burger king mm -hmm. yeah. and bef at that time they weren't developing that side of the street Right. But now closer to 270, you know, they're starting to bring commercial up that side. And we're, I think we sold that thing for, I want to say 66 or $62,000 or something like that. And like, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Right. So 